Hey guys, welcome to, I do this every time. Is it 29, 30, 29? I, I think, think it's 29. I think it's 29. Welcome to Q&A 29. So happy to be able to help you again uh, another week and answer your great questions. Um, for anybody new that might be watching, uh, we are balanced dog trainers. And what that means is we believe in both yes and no. It means that we believe in rewarding the things that we want to see from the dog. And it also means that we believe in correcting or disciplining, punish, whatever word you want to use, the things that we don't want to see from the dog. So that's in a nutshell what balanced dog training is. On the podcast, a lot of questions that we get are how do I stop this behavior? So you may hear me talk an awful lot about punishments and correcting today. Um, just based off of the questions. But in our day-to-day -day training here, we use a ton of rewards, uh, shaping and patterning the behaviors that we want. So that's just sort of balanced dog training and how the podcast goes in, in a nutshell. Um, Danielle, my co-host, one of my trainers here, she's gonna read my questions for me. Um, some of the questions, if they're a little bit longer, she'll paraphrase them just because she knows how my brain works and she tries to simplify the question enough that I can answer it a little more concise. I have a tendency sometimes to ramble on and I do the best that I can. I'm gonna start pinching you. Yeah. You ramble. You should though, you should. A little bit of a negative consequence for yeah, that. Yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Or you could bonk her. Uh, yeah. Could bonk me. Bonker. Or, like, could you get, like, a clicker and, mm. like, some of that Lily's chocolate? Go grab some chocolate, chocolate out of the fridge. Clicker food. In the clicker. Yeah. And we can maybe try that counter conditioning protocol. Yeah, we can try that. I don't think it'll work. No? No. You think it might be a, like, a pro point of, <laughs> we no, might be talking trying. rehab. Yeah. It's a rehab <laughs> process. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, anyway, I... I uh, will try to answer your questions as direct and concisely as possible. However, some of these questions are, are generally a, a 30 to 40 minute answer. So, um, but I'll do the best job I can to answer them for you quick and concise. All right, you ready to go? Yeah, you can relax. Okay. Yeah. I'll uh, we'll sit back here and just, let's do it. Perfect. Am I relax enough? You're working on it. I don't, I feel like this needs to be. I did my part, so you get that out. Yeah, you it's it. like you you got a nice halo, but I feel like it needed to be, like it's was still too light. Right? Good. Okay. Yep. Should we come forward a little bit? You like that? Sorry, guys. This is kind of thing. Yeah. We I want you guys to before, say, yeah. before yeah, we start the podcast. It's, this it's okay. fine. Listen, okay. these guys are cool. <laughs> They're all cool. They're they all get cool. It. They get it. Uh, okay. If they stuck with us this long, now I don't know if any new people will. Who knows? <laughs> okay. Um, Sarah Miller, uh, she says that she understands that we've already gone over this, but she's struggling to housebreak their English Springer Spaniel pup. He goes outside half the time and goes in the house the other half of the time, and sometimes they take him out and he comes right in and goes in the house. How old is the pup? It doesn't say. Sarah Miller, is that like... Sarah, she's been following us for a while, so that pup has to be... Older than eight weeks. I'm thinking. Unless yeah. you just got a new pup. Um, and for some reason, I had in my head that she had a golden doodle. But anyway, I don't. I don't know. Um, read that to me again, just briefly. Dogs coming in. The dog goes outside half the time and goes in the house the other half, and then sometimes they take him out and he comes right in and goes in the house. So, lim watch your watch your water intake. I find that one of the biggest issues that folks are having is they'll put a bowl of water down, they'll let the dog like stand over the water and lap a whole bunch mm -hmm. up at a time. And then what happens is they take the dog out, the dog potties, brings the dog back in, eight minutes later the dog goes on the floor. Well, it's because it drank too much water. Drank too much water. That's like if I just, just drink all this, like drink it right down. Well, then I'm going to be running to the bathroom two times before this q and A's over. But if I drink on this, you know, a little bit throughout the day, then I'm not going to have to be running to the bathroom two or three times in 15 minutes. 
watch your water intake. Don't dehydrate the dog by any means, but just watch your water intake. Also, is your, dog, is your puppy doing too much free roaming? Because there's always a sign, guys. Like that puppy always is going to give you a sign before that dog goes to potty on the floor. So you just have to watch because if you're cooking dinner, you're not going to see the sign. If you are uh, helping your kids with homework, you're not going to see the sign. So I always tell folks and put the puppy in the in the crate. But I'm not sure what she means though by like they they take him out and then he comes right in and goes in the house. Like is he not going outside and then he walks in the house and he goes to the bathroom? Well, that's a he, good catch because like, if if he's coming right back in and going and he's not going potty at, in out in the yard, then you need to bring him in, carry him in, put him right in his crate. Put him right in his crate. So if I took you out to potty and you didn't go potty, I'm not messing around. You're going to go right in and you're going to go in your crate. Danielle's like the puppy expert these days. She's, she's, <laughs> I'm trying guys. <laughs> she is doing all of Lincoln's primary training. Yep. So he's, he's actually at her house and she is in puppy mode. And also sure, can you um, tell them like a little bit like, so, so I'm just going to tell them. So we're gonna put Well out good, because I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Despite what you may think, I don't have like this like direct connection with your brain. I can't always like, know exactly what you're thinking. I try. You're pretty good most of the I'm time. I'm pretty good, but I'm just not really sure where you're going right now. So I think you are. Perfect. We're gonna make we're going to actually make all these little tutorial videos of of Lincoln's progress from start to finish with all the little gaps. And we're gonna make these tutorial videos that sh are gonna show you step by step on how to get a puppy from ground level mm -hmm. to fully off leash trained. And mm -hmm. so we're gonna, we are gonna release that um, at some point. Wrong. Okay. Um, okay. So, thanks um, for the question, Sarah. Well, Sarah also has another question. She said, how do you feel about dogs living outside? She said, oh. asking for a friend. <laughs> That's a little. Sarah, dogs have been living outside under the stars the way the good Lord intended for hundreds of years. <laughs> What's so funny? I don't know. I just think the way you phrase things and that is really funny. Sometimes. I like it. Sometimes it's like I'm like an 80-year-old man. <laughs> Is, is that's a perfect way to describe it. You are like an 80 year old man. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I spent a lot of time with my grandpa. Yeah. Through my like molding years. Yeah. yeah, we can tell. Yeah. It's okay. It's good. Seriously. In America, we have gone so far over the top. It's incredible with animals. You're talking to somebody who loves their animals. You're talking to somebody who sleeps every night with 130, 40 pounds of dog on my bed. You know, I don't know <laughs> if my math is correct. You know, Roman and Benny probably could. Can, can, yeah, but... I'm not one to ask if your math is correct, so don't ask. <laughs> but me. my point is, is like, I get it. Like, I love my dogs. I cook for my dogs. My dogs sleep in my bed. I'm, I get it. But this whole concept of like, if you're going to get a dog and put it outside, you're a monster. No, you're not. So don't worry about that. Does the dog have adequate shelter? Can the dog get out of the sun, the rain, the snow? Can, is the dog warm in the cold temperatures? You know, can it get shade in the hot temperatures? Uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to advocate for you tying your dog out on a chain to a box. Like, yeah, that's animal cruelty, but mm -hmm. do you have a nice kennel for your dog? Mm -hmm. You know, I have outside dogs. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a dog breeder, okay? Like, I can't live in here with 12 dogs. Like, that would be a mess. And then, and then run a board and train? Like, no, but my dogs have a nice kennel facility. So, outside dogs are fine. Sorry for the rant and the tangent. See, you, you haven't been pinching me. That was a little hard. <laughs> gonna have nail marks on my arm. Okay, go I ahead. I think it'll be fine. New, next question? Yeah, next. Okay. Lauren McCauley, she wants to know how to correct jealousy 
Um, she says she has a two-year-old lab mix that loves love so much so that when she tries to love on her dog, he has to shove his nose and get in between. No aggression towards the other dog, but she wants to prevent it from escalating. And she also says thanks so much for your videos in these sessions. Absolutely. Lauren, I think this is our first question for, from you and we appreciate it. So welcome, happy to have you. Um, I actually don't, I wouldn't actually call that jealousy and please don't take this wrong or, you know, I don't mean this offensively. I would just call that being rude. It's just rude behavior. So the dog's just going like, but hey, pay attention to me. Why? Because I'm better, like pay attention to me. And it's like, hey, that, no, no, that's enough. So you have to like create boundaries with dogs. You have to like be able to talk and communicate with them other than just affection. So if I'm giving my dog affection, I can stop then giving the affection and you know, and then say, all right, get out of here. And then he'll walk away. Um, and there's also not gonna be any pushy snotty behavior. So how do you, how do you stop that? Um, I, you should teach the dog the out command. We should actually, we need to put a video of that mm -hmm. up. So mm -hmm. you should teach the dog the out command. And um, if we if we can get our the rest of our day together, we'll make a quick video of how to teach the out command and we'll throw that up on YouTube and we'll have it up there by tonight or tomorrow. So the out command is teaching the dog, when the, when the dog is near you, you say out, and then the dog actually walks away. So that's what I you should do. I did a video on that. I think we did, but I think I, I was- wasn't, find it. Yeah, okay. we, might, we might have, and then I, I might have just not been happy with the way that my teaching was or something, mm. and I don't know. Yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, no, you know what oh. happened with that? What, oh. You put, oh. A, you, you put a flower in my hair. Made me do an entire, an entire. I don't know why she won't put it up, guys. An it entire, was the tiniest. Little, it was a tiny purple. I was like this right big. Like this. I did an tiny entire eight-minute video. What's beautiful? She needed. It was like a little, little decoration for her hair. It's fine. An entire eight-minute video. I was like so serious. Like my teaching was like on point. And then I, I watched it later put to it put it on YouTube, and I'm like. Are you kidding me? The best part is, as soon as I hit play, she's behind me, like, chuckling because of well, this. Well, I assumed she would see no, it. No, I was like. In the thing. Anyway, bottom line is. Okay. Lindsay. Taylor. Lauren. Lauren. We'll get you a video up on YouTube. Hey, guys, go to our YouTube channel, Milligan Valley. Go to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe and then also hit the bell so you get the notification. So hit the bell, it'll send you a notification when we put up a new tutorial video. So now that we got YouTube working, we're, we're putting a lot of videos up. Yeah. So you'll get a, a notification about that. And I may just put that uh, out video on there without her knowing. It's fine. I could do that. Do you not think I'm smart enough that I can't just go on and hit delete? You can, but you won't know when I put it up. So oh. like you won't catch it. I'm not gonna like tell you, hey, I put that video up. You and would you too. Know. You I would. know that I would. I for sure would. All right, you ready? Next. Um, Hannah Wagner tagged her friend because um, her friend Hillary just at, got a German Shepherd puppy into the family. So she tagged us and said, thought you might be interested in following this for some dog pro advice if you ever need it. Hey. And she said, we know our stuff. Hey, hope you're doing well, Hannah. Hannah's my ex-sister-in-law. Oh, okay, yeah. Hope you're doing well. And thank you so much for tagging your friend. Um, thank you all for any tags that you, you give us, we want to help as many people as possible and you're helping us reach them. So thank you so much. All right, next. Okay, so Patty Coon? Yep, okay. Con, Coon. Con, Coon, yep. okay, sorry. Um, so I know who she is. So she, like, um, I know the name, but I can't remember how to pronounce it. Okay, well, okay, so she, there's, she's struggling with, um, she has three Goldens and one German Shepherd, and the youngest one is starting to question him being dominant, she said, the, the oldest one. Mm -hmm. So um, she, the oldest one, I guess, did go through something, an illness. He had cancer. Okay. 
So she said that she doesn't know if it was brought on by the illness. She does feed everyone separately. Mm -hmm. Lately, the younger one starts things. Okay, so here's the thing, guys, is yes, there is a little bit of a, of a, um, a natural pecking order that the dogs will do because they are pack animals. So absolutely, you're gonna have a dog that's more of a ringleader, dog that's more dominant, more submissive, like absolutely. But you always have to show and demonstrate to the dogs, hey dogs, I'm in control of everything. So when that happens, you don't have any bickering, you don't have any snarkiness, you don't have nonsense. Right, because the dogs go, she's in control. Not me, she's in control. Mm. So you have to do that. How do you do that? It's through management. So again, like I said in the, in the onset, some of these questions are a 30 minute answer, you know, but I wanna make it as simple as possible to get you going in the right direction and then come back to me and ask me more questions to help you, you know, go on this process. But you manage your dogs. So guys, look. So. That's my dog, Onyx. Roman. Board and train, right? Danielle's dogs are in the other room. I got another dog in the other room, but it's like everything's calm, everything's quiet. There's no, there's no nonsense because the dogs are all doing a job of some sort, downstays, place, right? They're all being managed. I could get up and go to the door and I could just call Roman off of his place. I could just call Onyx off of her place. There's not going to be any rough housing. It's management, guys. So teach your dogs obedience commands such as calm, downstays, place, those things. No, knock it off. You know, all of those things. Teach your dogs those things and then manage them. Otherwise, you're going to have a pack of wild dogs. Why did, why did things change in the pack? I don't know. I don't know. And again, yes, there is that natural, like, it could be more of a dominant um, personality or submissive. I have a golden retriever, um, Lainey. I mean, my security dog, like, submits to her, like, right now. Why? It's just a difference in personality, you know? But at the, at the end of the day, I can tell them both to knock it off, and, and they'll both be like, oh, okay, you know? So... Manage your dogs heavily. Okay, next. Sarah Miller. Um, so Didn't she... we just have Sarah Miller? There's That's two a Sarah, Sarah Miller. Millers. That's why I was so yeah. confused. That's a different Sarah two Miller. Two Sarah Millers. I'm like, I thought I know this... it did sound familiar, but that picture didn't look familiar. And oh, that's okay. why I was getting confused too. So we had a new okay. Sarah Miller. Thank you. Yes. Welcome. So okay. sorry, Sarah. I feel like we didn't we we appreciate your question that yes, you gave us absolutely. earlier, and we we're, we're sorry that we were so like so confused. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome and thank you for your question. Now, Sarah Miller yes. has been a longtime fan yes. and viewer. Okay, let's get to you. <laughs> so she says you mentioned that during training you actually do a lot of rewarding food and attention. Yeah. I feel like I'm constantly correcting behavior and that I don't do enough rewarding. How do I find a better balance? How do I reward for something like a downstay or a place without inter interrupting? So Sarah, you're you're right. We do a ton of rewarding here, either through physical touch or food rewards. First two weeks of our board and train program, everything is clicker, food, low level remote collar work. And of course, we any any nonsense, jumping, lunging, rushing out of the crate, that gets ad uh, 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 addressed right away. But make sure that you did enough patterning of everything with your food. Also, even dogs that we, we wean off of food because they're done with their their clicker food protocol and stuff, you still gotta pay that dog. You still gotta reward that dog because that dog's working for us. And the dog is working for us for payment. And the payment is physical touch or the payment is a food reward. So if we're not paying the dog well, then we're not going to get the, the work ethic, you know, mm -hmm. that we're desiring. So I always say this, this is like something I always say, is anybody who feels appreciated is always gonna do more. 
than, it's, than is expected because they feel appreciated. Dogs are no different. So you pay a dog well and they're gonna work harder for you. Do you have anything to add to that? Mm -mm. Just stop doing that with your hair. Well, listen, I, I get I, that. You have to have it up I, there. But it's just it's fine. this, this well, light coming in here, and then I then I creep out of the light, and then and then back. you come over here. But then you're you're like get anxiety because I'm like too close to you. So it's just fine. You can stay over here. Look, look, we can be close. Come on, act like you're my best friend here. Well, just keep your hair in the front. Okay, it's there. Perfect. Okay. All right. Not because of her hair, guys. Just a wardrobe issue. <laughs> just needed it in the front. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway. <laughs> I didn't want people to think I was trying to micromanage the way you <laughs> made your hair. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> you're welcome. Thanks. I get, I, I'm here. picking up what you're laying down. Helping you there. Thanks. Okay. So, no. Do I have anything to add to that? No. Okay. Um, next. Okay. Uh, Katie Shriver says that Whitney is amazing. She's a dog whisperer. She didn't say anything about me. Aww. Aww. Well. Next week she will. She probably will. I know, because I said that. So next yeah. week she will. She will. Thank you. Um, but I love you, Katie. Yeah, we do. We love you. Um, Katie's my cousin, <laughs> so she's biased. <laughs> she's biased. Okay, next is Sydney Payne. She says, what age do you recommend fixing a male golden doodle puppy? I, I don't know. Um, I am a really big advocate um, of staying in my own lane. So I try not to ever give out medical advice. And I hope that if you are seeing a vet that is giving you dog training advice, you question that. Okay, my vets are awesome. They're absolutely awesome. They stay in their own lane. So they refer out dog training and they don't overstep their bounds when it comes to giving too much training advice. And I don't overstep my bounds uh, of giving medical advice. So I actually don't, I don't, I don't have the answer for you on that. So, but thank you for your question. Uh, again, I just, I just try to stay in my own lane. But I appreciate your question. Next, uh, Lisa Lamont. She wants tips on cage training for a five-month-old dog. She says they have to shove and push the dog in the cage. He's strong and it's a hard task. He cries for hours in the cage. Sometimes he has accidents in the cage and it, it says it barely fits him. I'm not, so it's not too large. I, I'm not actually. Not too large because sometimes dogs will have accidents in the okay, cage. Okay, that's what she, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I was confused yeah. about that. Sorry, thank you for explaining that. You're welcome. Is that it? Yeah. Lisa, I think you are also new and I appreciate your question. Um, I'm gonna help you out here. So uh, a big lie and a misconception out there that I will debunk and throw a wet rag on that fire right now. And that is if you correct a dog in the crate, the dog will hate the crate. No, it won't. The dog already hates the crate. Your dog already has a bad association with the crate long before you came asking me for advice, right? So keep that in mind. I shut dogs up in the crate real quick here. So anybody that tells you like, well, you can't do that because you'll create a bad association with the crate. No, you won't. I've never seen it, never seen it at all. What you're gonna do is you're gonna have to ask somebody. So if Danielle and I were working with a board and train dog coming in with this problem, if we were getting your dog in on training, what we would do is that dog would have to sleep in a crate tonight. Mm -hmm. And that dog's not gonna keep my entire house up and my training room disrupted. So that dog will learn to lay down and shut up and behave in a crate tonight. So you can do this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna ask someone to help you a friend, family member, spouse, neighbor, someone to help you. And what I would do is I would feed the leash through the kennel. I would put Danielle on this side of the kennel and I would stand over near the dog in the opening and she wouldn't say anything. She would be doing the legwork, which I would say, kennel up, and she would pull the dog through, kicking and screaming and throwing a fit. She'd be on the other end with the leash, mm -hmm. pulling the dog through. 
The dog would get in. Good boy. Good piece of pepperoni, bologna, cheese, something high value to say, good job once he's in there. I want you to role play that over and over and over and over again until you say kennel up and the dog walks in no leash pressure. You might have to do that if, a, a day or two, you know, but that's how you're gonna do that. And then when he gets in there, any nonsense, you're gonna hit the top of the crate and you're gonna tell him to knock it off calmly. Anytime I ever tell people to discipline or correct or punish their dogs, I always want you to be calm. No. <laughs> All the dogs here just went, we're, what did we're we good. Do? We didn't do anything. I want you to N-O. All right, I'll spell it. You're doing great. N-O, hit the top of the crate with a dog bowl, a bonker, your hand, whatever. Hit the top of the crate. And then I want you to counter condition with food. When the dog is calm and quiet, then I want you to, to, to give the dog uh, food for being calm and quiet. Now I am being serious, no. Good boy. He's like, I was just stretching. <laughs> um, that was quite a long stretch. Um, so you're gonna do that, counter condition with food. And uh, just as a side note, guys, you want your crate to be big enough that the dog can stand up stretch comfortably circle and turn around and lay down so it shouldn't be too big and it shouldn't be too small nothing nothing makes my skin crawl more than when i see a dog in a crate that's too small for it so i'm not saying you said that i just am throwing it out there thank you because yeah, we actually have a lot of people who ask about right the, the cage and stuff like yep. that so so thank you lisa for your question if you need anything else um let me know next Okay, so um, Sarah Miller tagged two of her friends. Hey, thanks, Sarah. And uh, she said, um, she was just giving us a little, she said these are the videos that she's been telling her friends oh, about. Oh, so. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Steph, and you, I'll, I'll let you have her last Dinger. name. Dinger. Okay. Um, looking for puppy classes. Looking for puppy classes. So we do private training and board and train. We don't do any group classes at this time, and I actually don't know any other trainers locally that I could recommend for a group class. Um, uh, the only other trainer that I would recommend seeing at all does private training, just like I do. So I don't know any other local trainers that do group classes that I could recommend. Um, if you are looking if, if you didn't necessarily mean a group class, but you're just looking to have some sessions, um, you can go to milliganvalley.com, milliganvalley.com, and you'll see a full list of our rates and services. There'll be an application there. You submit that, and either Danielle or, or I will give you a call to discuss the details of that. So, perfect. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Oh, you didn't get it. No, I know. I thought you meant is that it for that question. Oh. Like, oh, no. Yes, that's Next. it for that question. Next. Stacy Benline, she wants to know how to get a puppy to stop nipping. Oh, Stacy. Um, uh, she's, oh, yeah, Stacy. She has one of my puppies. Um, go to, I'll, I'll briefly explain it here, but we, um, we have some YouTube videos. Maybe we could attach those to the post when we put it up. Attach those, a couple of those videos. Um, Go to, um, I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah, go to the YouTube channel. If you didn't subscribe, go subscribe. Uh, I have videos on puppy nipping. There's two videos up there. 12 weeks and, and, and younger, we'll do thumb in the mouth, kind of like on top of the tongue and press down and back towards the throat. Do that firm enough that you should get an audible. Like the dog should go like, Arr! like it should be uncomfortable. Um, you could do that. I have a video on, on that. Um, and then I also have a video where you can squeeze the dog's lips into its teeth. You can do that. Should get an audible on that one as well. Or 12 weeks and, and older, you're going to say no and bonk the dog. So you're going to give a um, one Mississippi and no, one miss. He's getting uncomfortable because I keep saying it. <laughs> One Let's Mississippi, and O, because my dog can, can speak English here. One Mississippi, and O, and then bonk. 
So any one of those things. The bottom line is you have to discipline and you have to correct the dog for teeth on skin. So do that, but uh, we'll get those videos tagged in the post. Next. Okay, so we're on to our Instagram questions. Oh, okay. But um, I, it's I'm okay, so buddy. sorry, Lynn. Like, it's a, I just don't know how to, like, I, I'm... Yeah, because... Because it's an Instagram name. She took like the. It's, it's like more stressful even. I know. Even on the Instagram name. It's fine. Just I'm just... getting all hot and anxious. <laughs> it's, it's like just, just getting anxious. Just, people are gonna be all offended because they can't say their names. <sighs> oh my gosh. Start saying first names. How about I that? have a client in 21 minutes. Well, it's not gonna take me 21 minutes to say her name. We only have three questions. Okay, on. Lynn. Lynn also has one of my puppies from several years ago. She says, how do y'all get such awesome curls? Aw, Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks. Take it. Because I taught her how to curl your hair. <laughs> That's how. It was a slow process, but it worked great. We're good now. We I do hair. So we could probably just start with that. Yeah. I do hair. Danielle's I've done hair for yeah. 13, 12, 13 years now. Yeah. So. And let me just, let me just say this about you. I'm going to give you a nice oh, compliment. Can you just, okay. She's really good. Oh, thank you. She's really good. She's, thank you. she's so much better at doing hair than she ever gives herself credit for. I do enjoy doing and hair. And <laughs> looking back, don't you wish you had videoed teaching me how to curl my hair? I do. I do, because that was fun times. That was funny. I was all hot and she anxious. She was so anxious. <laughs> she was like, I just can't do this. I'm like, stop panicking. It's fine. Yeah. We've got this. She's not wrong. It was It was. <laughs> but look at her now. She yeah. does it herself. Yeah. She's great. Yeah. Yeah. Doing good, buddy. Anyway, thanks for the compliment, Lynn. <clears throat> all right. Rick1285. <laughs> Got I, it. I reprimanded her for saying one, two, eight, five. Okay. I got, I got docs some pay. You got docs I wasn't pay. allowed to eat lunch a couple days. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Twelve eighty five. I got this. Okay. He says, when you're out and about and see someone doing something wrong with their dog, what do you do? Nothing. I am I not like the biggest advocate of mind your own business. She is. Mine? I'm still working on this. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, but not in general. You, no, you don't I just, get in people's business in general. Oh, no, I'm talking when about I see it, don't, in general. You are in general an advocate of mind your own business. Mind your own business. Yes. Don't worry about me. Mind your own business. Yeah. I, <clears throat> Rick, I have went to my friends' houses, my family members' houses for dinner, for a party. I just let it go. It's like a, it's like a doctor. Okay, so I was in dentistry for ten years. Okay, so I meet you out for dinner, and you're like, "Hey, can you look at this tooth?" It's like, "No, I can't look at that tooth. Come see me in my office." Um, I've been at, at friends and family members' houses, and I'm like, "Okay, it's an interesting way to live with your dog." I don't say anything. If you want my help, you can ask for it. Now, like on this podcast, I'm very opinionated. You're all coming to me asking my advice, mm -hmm. and it is my podcast. So I'm obviously very opinionated out and about. Now, I will tell you this. If I'm out with my dogs or my client dogs, and you come and get in my space with your unruly dog, I'm absolutely going to take my foot, and I'm, and I'm going to nudge your dog away. And you might find that rude, and I'm like, well... You know, get out of my space. But I don't want people to, I, I want people to mind their own business if, if they don't agree with prong collars and remote collars. Like, and they come and say like, oh, I can't believe you put that prong on your dog. Which happens to my mm -hmm. clients. You know what I do? Walk away. I don't say anything back. Or sometimes if I'm snarky, I might say, just get out of here. <laughs> I got You're just kind of like, you're just going on. Yeah, you're doing good. But sometimes if I'm feeling snarky, I might be like, well, if my dog looked like yours, <laughs> I wouldn't have walked out of the house and then I'll walk away. But in general, I just mind my own business. Okay, next. Okay, one more question. 
the person, I, I have no idea how to say this. So that is a past client of mine, <clears throat> Maddie Rask. Okay, good. Um, she says, our neighbors have zero control over their dog, comes after nice? us all the time. Any advice? Isn't that nice? Here's my advice. It might irritate some people and other, other people might be like, okay. Um, kick the dog. Kick the dog. Can you explain? Like, Firmly. are you, you're saying like, if the dog comes to you I'm and out. jumps on you. Okay, because I right? trained their dog and their dog is extremely well mm -hmm. trained. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm out minding my own business with my dog. So you're out with Axel, you're minding your own business, and this out-of-control neighbor dog charges your dog, charges you. Kick the dog. You have to advocate for your own dog. You have to. Mm -hmm. Pick up a stick, hit the dog, kick him. You know why, guys? We get the rehab dogs. Like, we get the dogs who yeah. have been attacked on leash, and their life is wrecked forever forever like we'll never be the same because of the, the ptsd from being attacked by another another dog so i'm gonna absolutely show my dog i will advocate for you i will take care of you and i'll protect you and if your neighbors get upset and mad about that tell them well you need to get control of your dog and he needs to quit coming into my my property so, yeah. Anything else to add? No, I liked that answer. Yeah. I just really believe in advocating for your dog. Yeah. Because, like, it's just so many of these dogs we get in have such bad PTSD. Tony's here. <laughs> I know the FedEx guy by name. It's a small town, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Real small town. Um, Our little Malin doodle just alerted us. Yeah. There, so it's good. Meanwhile, the Malinois just appeared. <laughs> Malinois is fine. The Malin doodle, yeah. however. <laughs> um... Yes, she's absolutely right. The dog is watching. The dog is watching, and if they don't feel that their owner is going to advocate for them, that's when real problems happen. Mm -hmm. That's 75% of our client dogs. Hey, Tony's, hey. That's 75% of our client dogs are here in some form or another because they don't feel like anyone's taking control. So... Okie dokie. All right. We got a client in 14 minutes. Perfect. All right. Have a good time. Thank you, guys. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your great questions. And we will see you next week.